Hello and welcome back to our first real-world application of the Delta CT method. So as you may remember from what I told you before, these curves reflect one, two, three, four, five, six, seven samples that all contained a particular template that we were amplifying by PCR. And we were monitoring the amplification and what you may remember is that this blue sample here, light blue sample, had a high amount of template so it was amplified to detectable levels early on whereas the purple sample down here that contained only low amounts of templates so we get detectable PCR products only quite late took about 40 PCR cycles, that's quite a bit, to amplify that sample. So now we want to start and quantitate this in a more accurate way and we will use the Delta CT method for that. So how can we do that? Well, rather than drawing a vertical line at one particular PCR cycle, we now draw a horizontal line. And what I didn't tell you that yet is that the machine is doing that for us. The quantitative or real-time PCR machine would already suggest a threshold. So this basically is our threshold already. Let me draw this for you. This is our threshold T here, this particular line. So why would we put it so low? Well, the reason is that we wouldn't want this to reach saturation at all. And even if you might think that this is still exponential amplification, it's not. If you watch carefully, you see that only here you get doublings with every PCR cycle, but this is no longer doubling. This is a less than exponential amplification until here you reach a plateau where there is basically no amplification at all. So that's why you put the threshold real low to the point where you can just detect, where the machine can just detect the fluorescence to the, that would correspond to the upcoming PCR product. So that's where you put the threshold. And you ask where would the amplification products cross the threshold, or in other words, at what PCR cycle does the PCR product reach the amount that corresponds to the threshold that we set arbitrarily. So, if I try to draw this, I, I can try that, but it's not real easy. I still try to, to do that for you. So this here would be one delta CT the delta CT between the, between the light blue and the violet line next to it. So that's one of the delta CTs. Here we have another delta CT, here we have another delta CT, and so on and so forth. And if you tell me that you can't quite accurately see where exactly the lines would cross the threshold, you're perfectly right. And in order to do that a bit better, we switch to a different view of our amplification curves. And that's something that I would like to show you here. So what you see here is the same amplification curves as before, but now it's on a log scale. Log scale, meaning that this is 10 units of fluorescence, this is 100, this is 1000, 10,000 and 100,000. The cycles are still plotted the same way as before, from cycle number 1 all the way to cycle number 45. So what you can now appreciate is the amplification of our PCR products even at low amounts. That's something that you couldn't really see in the previous scale, but now you can see it and now you can appreciate how sensitive your detection works. So you may ask, okay, but what happens down here? What happens at even lower levels of uh, amplification? What happens to the samples that just went uh, to a couple of PCR cycles? What kind of funny mess is that? 
Well, that's essentially an attempt of the machine to take the logarithm of zero or a number that is very close to zero because actually there is no detectable PCR product available yet and still the machine tries to determine the, le the, the intensity of fluorescence. This level is close to zero and if you try to take the logarithm of zero uh, your mathematics teacher will become mad at you because you're not allowed to do that and if you still try to take the logarithm of a very low number you reach very far into the negative numbers. So this is what the machine is trying to do here and that's why this is becoming such a mess. For practical purposes you can ignore all that down here. Only from here on the levels of intensity that you measure do make some sense and from here on indeed you see a linear amplification. But be careful with the word linear. I'm saying linear because here on a logarithmic scale an exponential amplification will look like a linear graph. It's still exponential amplification but on the logarithmic scale it looks like a linear graph and that's why some people actually call this linear amplification. I'm not a big fan of that but you can do that as you want. In any case what you see is a linear graph here. Now using that linear graph makes it much easier to visualize the delta CT because now you can see much better how your amplification curves will cross the threshold that we are using to measure the CT and delta CT values. And if I now get my pen again, I can tell you quite accurately that this here is our first delta CT and that the delta CTs for the subsequent samples can be delineated as shown here. So what you will see if you just watch these delta CT values is that all of them are quite close to 3 or actually they are a bit larger than 3. So delta CT is roughly is roughly 3. So what does that tell us? Well, as I told you before, it basically means that from here to here you need three doublings. So that means from here to here the fold difference between those two samples has been 2 to the power of 3. Well, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. I, can, I guess you can figure out that. And actually, since we are looking at CT values that are not quite exactly 3, but slightly larger than 3, the real fold difference between those different samples is 10. So what you are looking at, now guess what it was? It's a 10-fold dilution series. So, this sample had the highest amount of your PCR template. This one had 10-fold less, and again 10-fold less, and again 10-fold less, and so on. And this sample down here had 6 times 10-fold less, so 10 to the power of 6. It's 1 million-fold less than in the initial sample. That's what you have down here. So basically what you have been looking at here is a tenfold dilution series. And that's something that you have found out by applying the delta CT method. So just as a take home message, let's just recapitulate that again. So the fold difference, or better, the ratio between sample A and B is nothing else but 2 to the power of delta CT and that corresponds to 2 to the CT value obtained with sample B minus the CT value with sample A. If you got that, you really understood 
the principle of quantitative PCR and all we need to add now are a few more features that are now quite easy to understand and this will then allow you to apply it to pretty much any determination of DNA amounts that you would like to use. Thank you very much. See you later.